Hi, my name is Will, and today I'm going to show you a quick tip for working with audio inside of large projects in After Effects. Chances are, if you've worked with large projects in After Effects, you've run across this issue before. And here's a way to solve it using expressions. So here's what I mean. Here I have a simple After Effects composition. Um, I have my audio track here. If I tap LL, I can actually see the waveform. And above it, I have sequence 100, 200, and 300. So I go into 100. Here I can see all the beautiful animation and a copy of the main audio track for use when timing animations to the audio cues. Uh, same is true for sequence 200 and 300. So there they are with their animations. If I go back into the master comp, um, highlight them all and hit LL, you can actually see the waveforms and how they correlate to the actual master audio here in the uh, master comp. So here's my finished project in all its glory. I think I'm all done with it, and then I get a note from the client that says they want to move one composition over here. Now that means that my audio is out of sync, and inside this comp, my audio is no longer useful for timing my animations. So the normal way is to go into the composition, drag your audio, shift it to where it should be, go back to the main comp, um, it actually you'll see that it actually hasn't adjusted, so you'll need to refresh it by just moving it around a little bit. You can see that it's not lining up, okay? So you gotta go back in it and fine tune it and move it to where you think it should be and move back here. It's not a very efficient way of matching up audio. So how do you solve this problem? Well, we can use time remapping and expressions. So let's go ahead and put it back to where it was. Put this back to there, put that back there. Okay, there we go. Now we have what we started with. So we'll go ahead and collapse all this go into sequence 100, and what we're going to do is we're going to write an expression onto this audio track inside of sequence 100. Go ahead and hide the waveform, right click, and we're going to go to time, enable time remapping. Now that gives you two keyframes. Um, we're not going to mess with the keyframes. Uh, instead, we're going to write an expression on the effect itself. So go ahead and alt click on stopwatch. Now let's write our expression. First, we need to start off by defining some variables, and then we'll write an equation with those variables. So let's see. Let's start defining variables. Comp start time in parent equals comp parentheses quotation. Now we need to reference the master comp that holds our master audio. In this case, my master comp is called master underscore comp. So master underscore comp parentheses period layer layer this comp net dot name dot start time okay audio start time in parent equals and then we're going to do the same where we reference a main master comp comp master master underscore comp parentheses dot layer parentheses this layer dot name and parentheses dot start dot start time okay full start time equals this dot start time okay full end time equals this dot source dot duration plus start time. Okay. Now we need to write our actual equation. Linear parentheses time comma full start time comma full end time comma full start time in parent, oh, nope, 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 full start time plus comp start time in parent minus audio start time in parent comma full end time plus comp start time in parent minus audio start time in parent and parentheses. There we go. So there's our expression. So now if we hide that, 
click on the layer and hit U. Uh, now I go back to our master comp, highlight sequence 100, 200, 300, and tap LL to reveal their waveforms. We can see it just like before, but now if we click 100 and move it, you'll see that it's actually referencing the waveforms of the original master comp. If I grab sequence 200 that does not have the expression on it, you can see how it's behaving normally, like what do you expect. But with the expression in sequence 100 on that audio layer, the audio is actually updating in real time. So if we move it, and then we go inside the comp and reveal the waveform, we can see how the waveform has actually been updated. Now there's this weird quirk about using this method. If I move a layer around and look again at the waveform, it appears like it hasn't changed. It actually has, it just needs to be refreshed. So grab the uh, audio layer and just shift it around a little bit and it'll refresh for you and you're good to go. So that's a handy little expression to use when working with large projects in After Effects.